are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another Locked On NFL crossover. The Denver Broncos travel this weekend to take on the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Cody Rourke, host of Locked On Broncos, and I'm talking with Marcus Mosher, host of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We're going to preview Sunday's matchup between the sixth-ranked defense in Denver against the NFL's number one-ranked offense. And look, Marcus, thank you so much for uh, for joining us here today. I mean, it's great to join you and your audience. And I'm glad that you could join Broncos Country's audience as well to preview this matchup. Yeah, I'm excited for this game. I'm excited for this show. Uh, it should be a good one. Yeah, I know. I'm excited for obviously a lot of storylines coming into this. So, you know, I want to start things off here, Marcus, by opening things up in terms of questioning for the Dallas Cowboys side of things. I think for Broncos country, they're looking at this matchup and a lot of fans look, this has been an interesting season for Denver. They mm. started off three and oh, they lost four straight games. Now they're sitting at four and four. It's just, a, it's been a weird season and, and really trading away Von Miller was one of those things. And the Dallas Cowboys were actually one of those teams that had inquired about what it would take to get Von Miller. Now, for the Cowboys in this regard, what is the the number one thing, I think, heading into the week for them this week against the Denver Broncos? Obviously coming off of a Sunday night football victory against the Minnesota Vikings, Cooper Rush mania, going to Amari Cooper, goal line fade in the end. What's the story this week? So first and foremost, thank you for beating Washington last week and just opening up the division <laughs> lead even more. Thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, for the Cowboys, it's just Dak Prescott, right? Like how healthy is he? Uh I think he was pretty close to playing last week, and the Cowboys are just being overly cautious. Uh, he was a full participant on Wednesday at practice. He's a full participant on Thursday. Uh, so it's just how much can he move around? Are you worried about him in the pocket without Tyron Smith, who's going to miss this game on the left side? That's really the biggest story because if he's healthy, this is one of the best teams in football. I mean, I think it's really easy to see. They're a very explosive offense. They're the third scoring offense in the NFL, but the number one in terms of overall yardage and production. A lot of that comes from Dak Prescott. Obviously, he received that big-time contract. When you look at the receivers, now obviously Michael Gallup's still on injured reserve, but C.D. Lamb, you look at Amari Cooper, and even Cedric Wilson getting in the mix a little bit, and then Schultz at the tight end position. Mm. He's been a fun player to watch the last few weeks uh, when I've caught some Cowboys games. But I, I like that you mentioned about Dak Prescott and the calf, that there's a little just bit of precaution with it because soft tissue injuries – they suck, and they can just re-aggravate quickly. So do you imagine they're probably going to be monitoring him throughout the game here? And I mean, could we yes. see potentially, even though if Dak gets the start and does play, could we also see Cooper Rush? So let's just kind of you know back up for a second. He got hurt in the Week 6 game against the Patriots in the last play of the game. The Cowboys had a bye week. During that bye week, they did some research on calf injuries for quarterbacks, and they found that there's like a 16% re-injury rate for quarterbacks that suffer these uh, calf strains and the the last thing they can afford is Prescott to hurt this and be out for a month right they just don't want that to happen so they thought if we can give him one more week kind of to monitor him see how he's doing it would be much better going into week nine and he is he's he's feeling much better about it he's not as sore as he was so uh, I don't expect to see Cooper rush in this game unless he re-injures it it shouldn't be a big deal however I will say Prescott this year really hasn't been a quarterback that's used his legs really at all. Other than, you know, your traditional like rollouts and kind of design design runs, you know, on the move. That's about it. I think the leg injury that he suffered last year kind of zapped some of his athleticism and quickness. And he's really just a pocket passer. So I do think you're going to see him more so than usual. Just stay in the pocket and make those kind of throws rather than using him on design runs and stuff like that. Well, and also looking at it as well, kind of shifting gears to the defensive side of the ball. Trayvon Diggs has had a very impressive season so far. Seven picks on the year, 11 passes broken up. I mean, right now leading the NFL. Yeah, great month, four interceptions in the month of October. And I think I've also seen a lot of discourse on social media too that while Trayvon Diggs is making these big plays, sure. he's also given up a lot of yardage through the air. Now, in your opinion, is this based on scheme? Is this just based on the fact that, you know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some? And who do you think he's going to shadow this weekend in this matchup? So it's true that Diggs does give up a lot of yards. I think he's like in the top five of yards given up, but that's a philosophy thing because the Cowboys have, as you mentioned at the top, the number one offense in the league in yards, number three in points, and that's really only because Cooper Rush had to play last week that they're not number one. So 
they don't necessarily care that he gives up a lot of yards. If he can steal a possession a game like he has through the first eight weeks of the season, they're fine with that, right? Like that, they're a hundred percent fine with that. So they're okay with him taking risks and being an aggressive cornerback. Um, I think he's going to stay with Cortland Sutton, and that makes sense because of you know the size advantage that Sutton has over most corners. But how fun would it be, Cody, to see an Alabama versus Alabama matchup on both sides of the ball, right? Amari Cooper versus Patrick Sertan, uh, Jerry Judy against Trayvon Diggs. That would be a lot of fun. I hope we at least see it for a couple snaps in this one. No, I'm with you there. That would be very intriguing. Not to mention this is Jerry Judy's second week back from coming off of that ankle sprain he suffered in week one against the Giants. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, another thing, too, looking at this defense, one thing I noticed when watching him against the Minnesota Vikings, and look, I, I went back and watched the last two weeks again, you know, for the Dallas Cowboys. The one thing I wanted to kind of pinpoint there, do you feel like maybe the defense, being as aggressive as they are, do you feel like that also leads to some of those instances? Like, for example, Randy Gregory against the Vikings, he had two 15-yard penalties that were just absolute killers uh, against the Minnesota Vikings. Is there a concern about there? Is that just because they're playing really aggressive, really fast? They're going to play fast and aggressive. I think that's one thing that Mike McCarthy and Dan Quinn have really stressed. It's, you know, if you're playing at 110% you know, all the time, we can live with some of those type of penalties because eventually it's going to pay off in terms of strip sacks and forcing fumbles and tip balls, interceptions. So you'll get some of that in this game. The Cowboys are not going to shut you down and hold you to, you know, 300 yards of total offense. It's just not going to happen, but they thrive on stopping you in the red zone and making big plays because they know if they can force two turnovers against a team like the Broncos, that's going to be the difference in the game. Their offense is just so good. Uh, that those extra possessions are what what makes the difference. So they're they're going to have mistakes. They're going to give up plays. They're going to have penalties. But it's okay in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, and I, you mentioned something about offense. Like you know what, they'll live with it. I wish the Broncos could be at that point where they say, you know what, they'll live up with giving up a couple of plays as long as they get a couple of possessions back. Because the Broncos offense has struggled, Marcus, and it's been very frustrating to watch. I think for Broncos fans. But the last thing I'm going to ask you here about the Dallas Cowboys and as it pertains to this matchup too, Micah Parsons. He goes a pick right after the Denver Broncos select Patrick Sertan the second, and, and we know that the Cowboys they wanted that. And I remember <laughs> in the draft buildup, you and Landon were wanting Patrick Sertan the second. I tell you what, he's been fantastic. I'm sure we'll talk about him here in a minute but so far from what I've seen from Micah Parsons he made a transition early on from inside back he had to play a little bit of DN some rush things that he could do really well how is he done fitting into that kind of hybrid role here in Dan Quinn's defense yeah so we'll never forgive the Broncos for drafting Patrick Sertan <laughs> and making the Cowboys trade down so I the Dallas Cowboys really wanted Sertan that's that's the guy they wanted at 10 as soon as he was off the board at was it pick number nine uh they had to trade they traded back and they're okay with Parsons but Man, Sertan and Diggs on the same team would have been a lot of fun. Uh, but Parsons has done really, really well playing both spots. They kind of pick and choose when to use him at edge, when to use him at linebacker, depending on the matchup. My guess in this game is you'll see him a lot more at edge trying to stop the rushing attacks, trying to stop some of the quick throws. Uh, and it's it's been unbelievable how he's been able to kind of flip back and forth between those two spots. Uh, he's just been everything the Cowboys could have asked for and more. Absolutely. Well, you know, Marcus, now we're going to flip things over and I'm going to open up to you to ask me any questions about the Denver Broncos that you have. Yeah, I want to start with Teddy Bridgewater because I mean, you look at the stats, they're pretty good. I know he was really beat up early on in the season. He took some brutal, brutal shots. Uh, that Cleveland game did not look healthy. Uh, what is your expectations for him this week against the Cowboys? Well, it's really hard, you know, because the first three weeks, Marcus, Teddy Bridgewater was playing very efficient football, and he was charging the Broncos downfield. You know, granted, it was against the Giants, the Jaguars, and the New York Jets, but the NFL's been so weird this year. It's like, you know, how do you really gauge it? But he has struggled in the last four to five weeks, and my expectation that I have for him, Vic Fangio said it this week, we have to be able to come out and take more shots downfield because the Broncos' formula right now, Marcus, they've just been getting the ball. It's been a snap. Teddy holds on to the ball. He's looking to throw deep. Nothing's there. He always throws it short, you know, so so if you need seven yards, he's going to throw it four or five yards. And, and really, that's been so predicated, and, and defenses have been picking up on that. And so the Broncos' offense has really been an eyesore for this football team. And Teddy's got to play better. Protection has to be better. There's going to be no Garrett Bowles this week for the Denver Broncos at left tackle. Calvin Anderson's going to slide over there. So that's something you have to always keep an eye on mm -hmm. as well because he doesn't have a lot of experience there, Calvin Anderson. So that's going to be a big key to watch. But it just Denver goes away from running the football. They, they have moments where they can run the ball well, and then they go away from it or the blocking 
scheme doesn't equate to successful efficiency. And then you have these breakdowns in protection sometimes in terms of pass blocking. And then just decision-making by Teddy Bridgewater has faltered here and there. But he is healthier this week, and I think that that's going to make a big difference. It's really hard to expect because the Broncos cannot beat the Cowboys, Marcus, if they come out and they have the mentality that we're just going to throw it short, chew up the clock, and then – Hopefully that you know they can get points. That's been the thing. They've been chewing up the clock, Marcus, and they've been throwing it short, but they haven't been coming away with points. And that's exactly where things have been hurting them in the last four to five weeks. And that was my next question about Garrett Bowles, because he is out of this game, as you mentioned. How I mean, Bowles has been really good over the last yeah. couple of years with Mike Munchek as the offensive coordinator there. So how or excuse me, offensive line coach, how 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 much is this a, of a decrease going to Calvin Anderson? Well, I mean, it's a big blow, right? Because it's your it's your Pro Bowl, All Pro left tackle that you just signed to a contract extension last season. He's been very solid this year for the Broncos, and I think a lot of the issues that they've had really have been on the interior of the offensive line, some miscommunications here and there. But you know, for Calvin Anderson, he's a guy that's only started two NFL games in his career. One of them was at right tackle last season. The other one was at left tackle when Garrett Bowles had food poisoning for one game and had to be out. And he did a really good job stepping against Carolina Panthers last year. But you know, I look at this Cowboys defense. How great they are and and I'm a little I'm a little concerned, you know, not necessarily against for Calvin Anderson. I'm just concerned because the lack of experience going against experience is definitely the biggest question in my mind. All right, let's go ahead and transition to the defense. And man, depending on the game that you watch for the Broncos, you can have wildly different thoughts about their defense, right? Like last week against Washington, they looked really good. Yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when they're playing Pittsburgh and Baltimore, uh, they struggled. And what can we expect from this defense in this game? Well, you know, I tell you what, a lot of the struggles have been attributed to just the injuries that have impacted them. Now, in week two, the Broncos, they, they had Bradley Chubb come back, and then he left that game, and he ended up getting ankle surgery afterwards. He won't be back till after the bye week, so you lose a pass rusher. Now you trade away Von Miller, but more importantly, in week two, you lose Josie Jewell to a torn pec. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks later, you lose Alexander Johnson to a torn pectoral muscle as well, so there's your two starting inside linebackers where – when you go back and you watch the tape and, and you see from when they're in there versus when the new guys have been in there, Justin Sternod and other guys, you're like, oh my goodness, it's such a significant difference. And, and that's really been an impact for the Broncos. But, you know, I think it's going to be Kenny Young. The Broncos had just traded for him yep. last week after the initial injury to Alexander Johnson. They went out, George Payton made a move, got him. He flies around. He's going to be a little bit more comfortable in the defense this week, having a second week under him. And then Baron Browning's likely going to get the start opposite of him as well. A lot of speed, athleticism coming out of Ohio. State this year, the Broncos third round draft selection. And then you're going to see a little bit of Justin Sternod being sprinkled in. But th there is that dynamic there in terms of the Broncos defense. The secondary has shored up. Now, Kyle Fuller was on the outside previously this season. He struggled and he gave up a couple of big plays through the air. So Patrick Sertan actually took his spot. And then Ronald Darby came off of IR and is now the right cornerback. And those two guys are going to start there on the outside. The biggest question, though, who's going to take the nickel spot? It could be Nate Harrison, who has done really well in training camp this year for the Broncos, got in last week. Or they might move Kyle Fuller there to the nickel spot. So it's, there's so many different things. But the back end of the secondary, Justice Simmons, Kareem Jackson, they are very reliable for the Denver Broncos. So it depends on which team shows up this week. And uh, look, Justin Simmons, he's he's looking forward to the challenge. He said it yesterday. So I imagine he's going to do everything that he can to help get everybody kind of rallied this week against a very good Cowboys offense. All right. I, I want to go back to the pass rush because no Chubb, Von Miller gone. Um <laughs> How are the Broncos going to generate a pass rush in this game? Are they going to do so by blitzing? Is Vic Fangio someone who likes to blitz a lot? What do you expect in this one? Well, you know, Vic predominantly likes to send four, but, you know, he, the last week, I, I think against Washington, he blitzed more than I think we've seen him blitz previously. And I think that'll be a good thing, too, if you have the linebackers do it. But, you know, with, with backs out of the backfield like Ezekiel Elliott, who can hurt you as a receiver, and Pollard as a receiver as well, I feel like you really have to pick and choose when you're going to blitz because any of those two guys could leak out and you, you know, they could burn you in a big-time way. So for me, I think that it's going to be balanced, right? You mentioned Dak not really trying to be the guy that's going to take it with his legs and more be that pocket guy if the Broncos can focus on collapsing the pocket around him and then squeezing it on in the interior I think they bode well in terms of maybe forcing an errant throw but it's very tough because it requires timing and Dak is really good at getting the ball out of his hands so I, I don't think that we're gonna see the Broncos blitz too much I think if anything we might see a couple of blitz where they send six but mostly I think we're gonna see four-man blitz maybe even three-man pressure consistently throughout this game but you do have Stephen Weatherly on the opposite side of Malik Reed who had two sacks last week against the Washington football team you have Jonathan Cooper and then you have some other guys starting to work back in at outside backer so uh, you know Denver's trying to go with a by committee approach at pass rusher with Von Miller and Bradley Chubb gone and we'll say it's going to be interesting to see how the Cowboys do handle pressure in this game because if 
DAC isn't as mobile as we're used to seeing. That could be an issue. Also, Tyron Smith, they're all world left tackles, not going to play in this game. And that means Ty Naseki or Lyle Collins, who you know started his career as a right tackle, is now going to play left tackle for the first time since college, which was back in oh, 2014. This will be the first time he's played that spot. Uh, it could be a little bit of an interesting challenge. Now, I'm not sure if Jonathan Cooper or some of the guys that Denver has is gonna, are going to really scare him on the outside, uh, but it'll be interesting to see how the Cowboys kind of handle that. Um, I want to just talk about this game in general. How do you see this play, you know, kind of playing out, Cody? Do you think this is going to be, you know, a 2017 game? Do you think Denver's <laughs> offense is going to get going? What are you expecting? Well, you know, I think a lot of it is contingent upon which Denver Broncos offense shows up. And, and look, I think as, if I, as I mentioned earlier, if the Broncos can get some rhythm on the offensive side of the ball, if they do have a long drive where they control the time of possession, they have to come away with points. You can't take five to six minutes off the clock not come away with points and then give it back to Dak Prescott and company because that's just a recipe for disaster. And the Broncos defense, I think if they can hold up and maintain solid play, look, they're going to give up some plays. They're going to give up some points. That's just the necessity of the game with how it is played today with all the weapons, all the talent that Dallas has on the offensive side of the ball, even on the O-line. Yeah, I know he's missing the left tackle there, but the offensive line is still pretty strong on the interior specifically. So I think that for Denver – this could go either way. If the same Broncos offense that's been playing the last couple of weeks shows up, I, I don't think it's going to be pretty for the Broncos side here, Marcus. And look, the optimistic side of me, I always try to be realistic for Broncos country. You can't get in a shootout with a team like Dallas because Denver doesn't have the offensive firepower to do it. They have the talent, but they just don't have the firepower from the coordinator standpoint, from the quarterback standpoint, to be able to do it. And I think that is a really big concern for me. I'm interested to see how the, healthy the Cowboys are because Amari Cooper is dealing with – Ribs, rib injury, hamstring, a foot injury, and now a knee injury. So that's oh four <laughs> lower leg things that's going on. Uh, CeeDee Lamb sprained his ankle in Wednesday's practice. Michael Gallup is dealing with a calf injury. We're not sure if he's going to play yet. He might p- be active. Blake Jarwin, uh, one of their starting two tight ends, they use both of them a ton, is not going to play in this game due to a hip injury. And then we just talked about Tyron and Dak Prescott. Uh, now, the Cowboys have a lot of other weapons. Even if Amari and CD are ban- banged up, they can use Ezekiel Elliott and Pollard and Schultz. And they've got this tight end they like in Sean McEwen, who's coming back this week. So it's just going to be interesting to see how the Cowboys try to attack Denver. Um, I think this game is going to be closer than what people think. I, I don't think this is going to be a shootout. I know the Cowboys are favored by 10 points right on right now on Bet Online. Uh, there you go. That's a shout out to one of our sponsors. Uh, so I, I, I'm thinking like a 27 to 23 type of game. Do you, is that, does that seem realistic? I mean, I think it's certainly possible, right? Because for the Broncos, the weird thing about them, like yeah, they get off to slow starts on offense, but usually they have a, a pretty good fourth quarter where they're able to put up 17 to 20 points. It's been really weird this year. So if they do get in a situation like that, I think that could be very realistic. I think with injuries on both sides considering, it, I think it very well might be possible. And I, I kind of told our, our listeners of Broncos country, this game kind of gives me a little bit of a vibe that I had a couple years ago when the Broncos traveled on the road to take on the Houston Texans. It was Drew Locke's first uh, career full-on start. Actually, no, it was the second start. He started against the Chargers week four. Uh, but it was the Texans game where he goes in and he just lights it up. I don't know if Teddy Bridgewater is going to light it up, but I do think that the Broncos is going to have a, a few opportunities here to make some plays. And if they can, if they can get guys like Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams going in the rushing game, and they can find maybe Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, or Jerry Judy you know, in some one-on-one coverages and maybe get across the middle of the field, it all comes down to protection and decision-making. I think the Broncos can play really well here against the Cowboys. I think it could be a fun game. And I had actually said on Pro Football Network, Marcus, I had said, I believe that this actually might be probably one of the more entertaining games of the week when mm-hmm. you look at it. So who knows? Despite the fact that Denver's 4-4 four and four and the Cowboys are sitting there at 7-1, and one, I think this might be maybe an under-the-rated, you know, under-the-radar type of game of the week here. Yeah, the Cowboys don't play in normal games. They play in just wildly entertaining games that come down to the last couple, you know, possessions. So I'm sure that's what's going to happen here. The biggest fear for the Cowboys is if Denver can run on them and control the clock and Teddy Bridgewater can use a short passing game to just keep the Cowboys off the field, that's where they're going to get in trouble. The Cowboys, the Cowboys can play a positive game script better than anybody. Like once they get up on a team by 10 points, by 14 points, it's kind of over because then the offense has all this confidence. The defense plays with you know aggression. They're fast. But when they get into negative game scripts or ones that are close in the fourth quarter, that's when games 
get kind of tight for them. So it should be a fantastic matchup. Cody, make sure you tell the people where they can find you because uh, I know you've been crushing it all week on Lockdown Broncos. I appreciate you. Well, Lockdown Broncos is free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. And, and look, on behalf of the whole entire Lockdown Podcast Network, I just want to say thank you to Broncos Country. Thank you to Cowboys Nation for making Lockdown Broncos and Lockdown Cowboys your first listen of the day. We're also here on YouTube, so people get to see us rather than just hear our voice. So, I, you know, like I said, I'm excited for this matchup, Marcus. Uh, tell Broncos Country where they can hear you. Yeah, I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. My co-host is at uh, McCoolBCB. That is Landon McCool. We do five shows a week. We're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you guys get your podcasts. Uh, Cody, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Enjoy the game, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.